Well, this will be our second deposition video. And we'll repeat the last slide of the last one, which is the general rule that except in Kames, a glacial depositional feature, and along the outwash plane in front of a glacier, glacial sediments tend to be unsorted or are unsorted. Sediments deposited by streams, however, and rivers and waves and wind, aeolian deposits, are sorted. And you can see here sorting. You can see how uh, the forces that left behind this, which I believe is the result of a glacial deposit, but that these may be stream-borne, and you can see fairly sorted cobbles, pebbles, then few cobbles and pebbles, I mean few cobbles and boulders, I think these would be boulder size in here, and then really very few pebbles at all, so sorted. So clearly the water is moving slow, a bit faster, very fast. We are sorting the sediment. And here you can see this cross section, and this down here is not relevant because that's all fallen out. Uh, that's all fallen out of the um, from this cliff face of larger material by gravity. So this would be mass wasting, right, or erosion by gravity. But here we see again the fine sorted sediment, slightly coarser with pebbles, and then coarser still above. This is on um, an island called Mull on Scotland, which has some most beautiful beaches. Um, and in general, I think we're looking at a uh, landscape here shaped by the last glaciation. So, so sorting of sediment is dependent on the changes in velocity of the water or the wind. So we have very well sorted. That would be down here and in here. That was pretty, very well sorted. We have well, the grades are very well, well, moderately sorted, poorly sorted, and very poorly sorted. And essentially, this, at this end, we're headed towards unsorted glacial till. But you can have gradations from very poorly to very well sorted that aren't associated with glaciers. As the velocity changes of, of water or wind, sorting continues, but the bedding, how, how the sediment is deposited, can become graded. A bed represents a distinct period of deposition. So here we have a sequence of coarse to fine graded bedding. Water or wind blowing hard, water if it's pebble size. Water or wind blowing hard, water to slow. Hard to slow. Fast to slow. I should say fast to slow. Fast to slow, fast to slow. Graded bedding. bedding. And here's the actual view of it in a rock. Here's a sedimentary rock where we have coarse, sorted, pebbles, sand silk clay moving up away from smaller and smaller pebbles until no more pebbles in the mix. Now streams are slowed down when they enter lakes or deposit sediment in and deposit sediment in an orderly fashion. Now this shouldn't just be lakes. This is also the ocean. This is the, the foundation of what's called delta delta formation or delta creation. So um, a stream or river enters a larger body of water and it's moving fast, it drops out its pebbles. Then it slows down, it drops out its sand. Then it slows further, it drops out its silt. And finally it slows down, and of course you know it drops out its, well it drops out its, in this case you can see what it drops out, it drops out its clay. Here you can see the stream moving into a lagoon. This is a slow moving stream, so it's not carrying pebbles or sand, probably only silt and maybe mostly clay, which is still suspended, but which will, over time, if this water isn't moving, is undisturbed, it will slowly deposit itself on the bottom of this lagoon-like feature, which is behind a barrier beach, like behind the beaches of, of southern Long, the south shore of Long Island or Long Beach Island in New Jersey. Behind that would be your lagoon or back bay. Now, sometimes... For instance, in the Gulf of Mexico, where huge amounts of sediments are carried down um, from north to south, 
over a huge portion of the from a, from a huge portion of the United States, you can get at the mouth of a river like the Mississippi, a delta. Delta so named by its shape like the ancient Greek letter delta, a triangle overall. So the sediments are brought out and are deposited as as the the energy towards the shore from the Gulf of Mexico combine, collides with the energy from the river and that slows sediment down and it drops out and creates land. It creates land. And here you can see the mouth of the Mississippi with this, this is called a bird's foot delta, this triangular shape slowly spreading. You can see more sediment here being deposited. And in fact, it is believed, except for channelization, which takes the Mississippi around New Orleans here, the Mississippi wants to move. Mississippi does not really want to go out this way anymore. It would like to cut down here, but we've made it so it can't do it, though it may happen without our control. And when we talked about Hurricane Katrina earlier, with this levee here breaking, causing the flood, that was because, again, during the storm, this lake back here filled up with so much water and put so much pressure on the levee that the levee burst and then it flooded it from here. Meanwhile, Katrina had badly damaged the coast here. And you can see these are barrier beaches behind which water is flowing, sediment is being deposited behind the beach and breaking out through the beach. And all of this is sediment sediment that makes new land. Now the problem they have down in Louisiana near New Orleans and along the Gulf Coast is that new land gets formed, but will it form as fast as sea level rises? That's an important question. If sea level rises faster than land can be formed, then we will see severe flooding of habitable, habited, inhabited land away from the shore. Here's a beautiful Delta picture, um, I think this is taken from uh, space, of what's called the Lena River, which flows from south to north in Siberia out into the Arctic Ocean. Beautiful, beautiful Delta. A huge amount of snow melt every year, carrying with it vast amounts of sediment that are making land. You have what's called an alluvial fan, which is a depositional um, form that you see in mountains. It's a flat fan-shaped area of sediment where a stream enters a valley only occasionally, not all the time. Often associated with arid climates that receive episodic, I think this should be, epi, no, this is right, episodic bursts of rain or seasonal snow melt. So here's an alluvial fan, which doesn't get water all the time coming out of it, but when it does, the water moves fast enough that it can carry a huge amount of sediment and deposit it at the mouth, coming out of a canyon in the mountains. Of course, we have stream deposition. Here we see a river in France with a beautiful beach, which is on the inside of the meander. So the river is flowing down and on the outside, it cuts away here. This is erosion. Remember, this is the cut bank. But on the inside, sediment is deposited and forms this beautiful beach for people to swim on. And this is a very distinct kind of form that we find in stream deposition, this, this point bar, this point bar. And this is called the Cirque de Madeleine in southern France, and these are all limestone cliffs, which weather more from water and acidity than from um, freezing and thawing, though they do get some freezing and thawing in the winter. It's a little bit warmer down there. Here you again, your cut bank on this side and your sand point bars, your sand point bars, your point bar deposition erosion of an, in a stream. And again, the water is always flowing in such a way that if you put it two oranges on either side of the stream and floated them down, they would end up down here passing through at the same time. When the water goes on the outside, it goes fast, but it's going a further distance. When it's on the inside, it goes slow, but it's going a shorter distance. And so overall, the water all ends up the same place at the same time. Again, your point bar, zone of deposition, your cut bank, your zone of erosion. 
Here's a beautiful one from an airplane ride I'm taking um, to Portland, Oregon back in 2019, where we see little zones of deposition. Here would be a little point bank, and this is erosional down in here, erosional down in here. And here you see the water is calm behind this section, the river flowing in this direction, and so this becomes an area of deposition where the water slows down. Stream velocity and cross-section in a curved part of a river. Where does deposition occur in a meandering stream? Where the water is slowest. It's obvious. Where the water is going slowest is the most area of most deposition. Here we have a bank that might collapse because here the current is fast. Here we have a point bar because the current is slow. Here we have some deposition on the bottom because the current is slow. And here we have the bank cut out. And this cross-section here Excuse me, this cross section of the stream is very characteristic of a stream. You should keep this shape in mind. This is what a cross section of a meandering stream will look like, where one side is cut away, where the water is moving fast, and one side is flattened, depositional, where the water is moving slow. So here we go, looking again at A and B and C. These are the cross sections. This would be the cross section at A, cut out at this side slow on the left. At B, it's in a middle stretch, so it's pretty even. Little deposition in the middle, and some, looks like they're describing almost like convection here. Then around this meander, it's the opposite is of the A. It's cut on the left and depositing on the right. So you get this nice idea of what the cross section of a stream might look at like. Now, often streams will flood and often a stream that's mature or old will have a flood plain, an area where over time water is flooded and then left behind sediment. Well, if it keeps doing that, you can get what are called natural levees. So the water is in the channel, but it floods over, recedes, leaves behind a bit of sediment. Floods again, leaves behind sediment. Floods again, and eventually you're building up a wall, a natural levee, which are found along the Mississippi River. Many rivers have natural levees formed from sediment that has flooded into the floodplain. And the floodplain is actually an important part of our um, human heritage because floodplains were part of the early um, agricultural riches that are formed in the fertile crescent of the um, Mesopotamian part of the Middle East with the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and along with the Nile, flooding, leaving behind vast amounts of rich mineral sediment, mineral-rich sediment, which was great for plant life, agricultural growth. Well, I think we can stop there, and then we'll do deposition by wind.